This week on CrossFeed. Happily never after. Welcome to Shepherd the Ridge, Register Trademark, Lutheran Church. Pastors to IRS, we triple dog dear you. It's just not Christmas without a freedom from religion lawsuit. And it's Tebow time, or at least it was till today. Everybody, on this wonderful Sunday when Kansas City beat the undefeated Green Bay Packers, welcome to this week's edition to Crossfeed News. I'm Pastor Jim Butler, gloating up here in Dedham, Massachusetts. Yeah, and I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, <sighs> trying to figure out who slipped something into uh, Aaron Rodgers' drink. Uh, man, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I have to. Yeah, obviously, I am the gloater. He is the gloaty. Yeah, Just yeah. Make that real clear, <laughs> man. Um, say uh, for our uh, our subscribers and and longtime fans, um, you haven't seen an episode in a few weeks. Um, it's for two reasons. Number one, um, I've been crazy busy uh, between juggling babies at home and uh, all the sort of Christmassy kind of things going on. Um, also, uh, we've had, uh, as you know from our last episode, uh, there were, uh, we had some video problems, and so half of the episode was audio only. Uh, we're hoping that that's fixed now. Um, we actually did two other episodes in between um, that I have sitting here recorded uh, that I haven't had a chance to post yet. I'm going to hold off with those and just do this current one next. And so what that means is there's two episodes that we've done that um that that you haven't seen yet. And um and so what I'll do is when I get a chance to edit those, um I'll post them up or, or maybe I'll hold on to them if there's a um you know around Easter time or something like that, if there's another time where we have to go a while um without posting an episode, um well I'll post one of those up as sort of a lost episode or something like that. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Crossfeed News, the lost episodes. Awesomeness. Awesome. Does that sound exciting? <laughs> hey, it does. It does. Wow, man. I'll tell you. Mm. Lost episodes, lost Green Bay Packers games. Hey, they have something in common. <laughs> I am going to enjoy this one. This is going to be a fun week for I mean, me. You, I... you do realize that like, it wouldn't be a, a huge deal if the Packers weren't so incredibly awesome. And, and you know, what a bizarre... Um, shift this was this week right i mean you know it's but you know it's when, when the patriots lost you know it had the perfect season and lost the lost the the final game in the super bowl to the giants that was one thing i mean because i mean they just the giants you know it was the super bowl game the giants made some awesome plays versus you know the packers and Kansas City, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, I, I it's not like you could say it's not like you could say it's a repeat of Super Bowl one, you know, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's just, you know, they um, were, you know, they were the, the team that was supposed to be super awesome and just kind of waltz into the Super Bowl and, you know, just, you know, uh, uh, nobody, nobody, you know, you, you could have wanted to put money on that game because nobody thought Green, Kansas City would ever be Green Bay. Yes. But they did. Somewhere Brett Favre is going, he had a lose eventually. <laughs> That's right. I mean, and it would have been one year tomorrow since our last loss. So, you know, it's been a year since our last loss. Uh, but since we're talking football, let's talk about the other big uh, uh, loss today, and that was the uh, Denver Donkeys against the New England Patriots. Uh, <clears throat> and the donkey quarterback, Tim Tebow. Um <clears throat> Yes, I am a Kansas City fan. If you haven't figured that out, and, you know, just by nature we despise Denver and Oakland. So you know, it's 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 I will be very insulting, but towards the team. Uh, however, it's just been amazing to me all year, as um, I have listened to people just despise Tim Tebow, and I'm going, why? You know, he, you know, he's a rookie quarterback. He's maybe not the best one. You know, I mean, it's, this is his first year. And it just seems like people are just jumping into him. Um, 
you know, partly because of his religion, but partly just his whole attitude towards the game. Like, this game's not that important, really, in life. And, uh, you know, and, you know, I just kind of had to, I've kind of laughed about this because, you know, uh, last week there were two players, um, from the Washington Redskins offensive line, uh, pulled for breaking the, quote, substance abuse policy of the NFL. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had Sue from the Detroit Lions kicking the guy from, uh, taking the one Packer guy, rubbing his helmet in the dirt and kicking him on, um, Thanksgiving Day. Yeah. Yeah, everything. And who's getting all the, who's getting all the criticism? Some quarterback who prays on the sides and does mission trips in the Philippines. I mean, I can't, it makes no sense to me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I tell you, this guy, the gall that he has going around, uh, you know, giving shout outs to handicapped and, and really sick kids and, um, you know, doing, uh, helping the poor and, you know, man, what a, <laughs> what a jerk. <laughs> right. I mean, and granted, I mean, yeah, the first of the year, you could say, yeah, I think he was not that good of a quarterback. I mean, you know, he, ran for more yards than he passed but i'm going to tell you something i watched him today playing uh, uh against new england and he has some nice passes i mean he has come a long way in this game in five weeks i mean and he is you know can't remember was he just drafted last year or was the year before that um but i mean this is this is his first you know regardless either way until he was, you know, put in place instead of Kyle Orton, he had not passed in an NFL game before. Um, and so that was all very new for him to do that. You know, I'm not a, I, I don't, I only follow the Packers. All right. As far as football goes. So like I, the first I'd heard of Tim Tebow, was the um, the uh, Super Bowl ad last year uh, for folks on the family that um, where you know he basically said I could have been an abortion but I wasn't or something like that uh, it wasn't exactly well, that's, like that that's, that's, that's what that was, it was implied actually there wasn't much detail in the ad yeah you yeah. had to go to their website for that yeah for more detail. yeah and it was really and, and that was I mean he, yeah. That was the gist of it, but because he was he was a lot more subtle than that, and uh, we covered it back then. Um, but uh, you know, the the irony was that um, a lot of people could have watched it and not actually gotten what it was about if it weren't for the fact that the press gave him so much coverage because <laughs> it it was blown out of proportion way before the game. So. <laughs> That was, that was the best publicity they could have gotten. You can't pay for that kind of publicity. So, um, but yeah, that was the first. And then I, I hadn't really heard anything else about him, you know, a mention here or there, whatever. And, uh, and then like all of a sudden this year, things have been going crazy. And, um, you know, and I, I, I heard he's a pretty good guy and, and stuff. And I thought, well, you know, it's nice to see some, um, some uh, role models, you know, in the NFL that, that take the fact that they are role models seriously. Um, I, I'm always nervous about people like that, just in that um, there have been so many in positions like that that people have looked up to as role models that have fallen. Um, the one that immediately comes to mind, not a football player or even a sports figure, but Miley Cyrus. Um, right. You know, she was, we talked about her, that she was doing these YouTube videos talking about how much she loves Jesus and all this kind of stuff. And um, and then, well, she's really, um, you know, Hollywood's gotten to her. Right. Well, it's not even that, it's that they're rooting really for him to fall. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> You know, and they just forget. I mean, this some of the things. I mean, you know, uh, 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 you know, one of the <laughs> there's so many things here. Like, you know, I kind of touched on earlier. One of the big problems with professional sports is the lack of character. And, you know, he really does show this need of character, and he uses his fame not for himself but for something else. 
uh, when he won the Heisman Trophy. You know, he said, uh, you know, it's a, uh, <clears throat> uh, he, he decided to use that then into, uh, raising money for a, um, oh, what was it? An orphanage or something like that. Um, you yeah, know, his, order his to, parents run an orphanage. Right. Um, and then, um, uh, when he was at, uh, the University of Florida, um, the, he, uh, started a powder puff football tournament and raised three hundred and forty thousand dollars for chair for charity. Mm-hmm. Um he uh that's what I liked. Um he attended a football awards ceremony uh at Disney and the night before he meets this twenty year old football fan who's a brain tumor victim and suffers hearing loss and tremors and he sat and he said she had this button saying I love Timmy and she had a chance to meet him, they're talking and he says, Well would you like to be my date tomorrow night? I mean, so, you know, here it is. He's bringing this trembling young woman down this red carpet, you know, and this is becoming this huge thing. Right, right. Because, he, he, you know, that, that's one of those things where he can say, hey, look at me. What a great, you know, quarterback I am and, or, or whatever. And look how talented I am. But instead, he's like, oh, let her, let her have the spotlight. Right. You know. Or uh, was it last week? Um, he, he had the interview and said, you know, and they said, oh, what, 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 what do you remember about this week? Or, you know, what the game was you know, I met this leukemia victim this week. <laughs> you know, and, and talking to him, he really inspired me. I mean, you know, that, that's that's kind of a nice thing. You know, what's what? You know, granted, he may not be the, the greatest quarterback that ever lived, but you know what? There's a lot of not great quarterbacks out there. Mm-hmm. So, so there's there's two other things to talk about. First of all, this whole um, what they call what they're calling Tebowing. Um. The bowing after, uh, um, kneeling down after doing something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm confused because that's not something new. No. I mean, uh, lots of guys do that. But it was some guy started it. Yeah. Some guy was at a bar <laughs> and right. saw it. He called it Tebowing and started a website and people started sending pictures of themselves Tebowing. Tebowing. Of course, now we have people doing it in the middle of schools and, Blocking hallways and being obnoxious. Uh, that's another story. But uh, so, who's the? What's the other point? Uh, well, the other thing about? is that that he's become such an icon for evangelicals that um, that it's it's sort of like if you're not a Tim Tebow fan, there's something wrong with you. That's right. You know, he's he's sort of the next. Uh, you know, he's he's like a human, uh, you know, purpose driven life, or you know, all these sort of. He's like the latest Christian subculture fad. Um, yeah, to a certain extent, there, you know, I don't think anything wrong with him, except of course the uniform he wears. But you know, that's that's not his fault. You know, <laughs> he got drafted. He didn't ask to join the team. Um, you know, but uh, you know, so hey, what can I tell you? Give give him my opinion. Oh my goodness gracious! Well, maybe he needs to have his T-Boeing trademarked. Oh, there you go. So this is I, I read this this article uh, earlier this week and it kind of caught my attention. Um, yes, because yeah, well, this, a, this is this by the way this is an interesting week because usually Dale chooses all the stories. I chose the stories this week. So yeah, so they're actually you can pretty good. You <laughs> <laughs> know, I, I followed the example of the master here. So. Yeah, well, no, you you didn't follow my example at all. There's not a single story about um, about Mormons or gays. <laughs> <laughs> So that this isn't go ahead. Good. This is an interesting story. Okay. So uh Mars Hill Church in Seattle, uh, which is actually the the sort of um uh, it's it for one it's a, and Seattle being the most unchurched city in the country, um is uh where Mark Driscoll founded Mars Hill Church as a uh church for people who don't go to church. And um since then it has become the Mars Hill network and they have uh churches all uh, it started out kind of all uh, branching out from Seattle. Now they're they're in Orange County, uh, and they're down in what Arizona now. It, it's kind of all along the um, the West the West Coast, Coast. and um, and so Mark Driscoll is is pretty well known as a real macho guy. Um, he okay, so he wears flannel shirts like I'm wearing right now um, while he's preaching. And, uh, and, um, 
I I actually I listen to his sermons. I enjoy listening to his preaching. Um, you know, uh, theologically he's a Calvinist, um, but uh, he's a he's a very talented preacher and and seems overall a really good guy. Some people are upset about they they say he's kind of bullyish, uh, just because he's he really emphasizes the masculine. Um, but uh, his there's another church called Mars Hill Church in Sacramento that was sued by Mars Hill Church in Seattle. All right. Oh, and by the way, these are not to be confused with Mars Hill Bible Church uh, in, uh, was it Michigan? Michigan, Rob Bell. Where Rob right. Bell was and recently left. Um, so, uh, of course, the name Mars Hill comes from the book of Acts, uh, where St. Paul uh, famously uh, said, I, I noticed that you've got this altar to the an unknown God, and you know, he essentially said, uh, let me tell you about this unknown God, his name is Jesus. All right? And um, and so it's not that you can really copyright Mars Hill Church, because there's lots of Mars Hill Churches out there. Um, now, the one in Seattle and, and the one in Michigan are probably the most two most well-known, because they're both really big. Um, but, uh, it, you know, it, all of a sudden... Well, that's this... exactly what happened, is that uh, uh, the church up in uh, Mars, uh, up in Seattle uh, had trademarked its name and logo in August. Right. And so they sued the church in Sacramento, saying, calling yourself Mars Hills Church, this is our trademark. Okay. But there's more to it than that, though. Because it wasn't just the name... Because there's lots of Marcel churches out there that they've never done anything about. All right. With this one, they didn't just copyright or the, the, the copyright infringement, the trademark infringement wasn't just about the name. It was the fact that they were using their logo. They were using, you know, like it was like the same font, the same everything. And, and so, you know, I, I heard about this and, and my, my gut reaction, most people go, oh, that's horrible to sue in another church and, you know, and, um, and, and who are you to, to claim a name that comes from the Bible and stuff like that. All right. But the problem is you've got this network of Mars Hill churches that are all connected. All right. Mm -hmm. And, and when people see that logo, they know, oh, this is one of those churches. All right, the same way that um, you see um, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and that tells you certain things about that church. Okay, they're not all the same, but there are certain things that they have in common, that and certain expectations you can right. have walking in. All right, or the Methodist Cross and Flame, or right. the ELCA's uh, Rainbow World, or whatever. I mean, every church body has a lot of church bodies have a trademark. Right. Right. Uh, and so yeah, the Mars Hill Church really Network local. is, in a sense, it's a tiny denomination. Mm -hmm. You know, these these networks of churches that you got your X twenty nine uh, network and your um, uh, was it uh, the Saddleback? They've got their own network. And uh, wait, is that the same one? I don't know. And Willow Creek has a, a, a yep. network. Willow Creek network. But, you know, I mean, I think okay, it doesn't make sense to. Trans, uh, to, to trademark a St. Luke's Lutheran Church? No. However, if you have a well-known church, Mars Hill, Willow Creek, um, that makes a lot of sense to trademark that name and that logo be to keep anybody else from using it. Mm -hmm. To keep somebody else from basically acting as though they're a member of your church, by your network, when they're not. I mean, what's the what's to prevent me from trans changing the name of St. Luke's to Willow Creek Community Church, dead of Massachusetts? And people are driving, oh, that must be associated with Bill Hybels Church. Right. You know, I mean, we've got the same name. Or Mars Hill um, Church. Oh, <laughs> you know, the first question, anybody who knows something in evangelical circles is going to go, are you guys related to, 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 to the Mars Hill Church out in, in Seattle? Right. And, you know, and the thing is, People might just assume that you are, right. you know, I, in right. fact, they would assume. In fact, um, I had somebody actually had to set me straight because um, 
when when I first started hearing about all the stuff about Rob Bell, I did not realize that those were two different churches. I never paid attention to where it was. I just knew Mars Hill Church. I heard Mars Hill Bible Church, and I went, eh, same thing, you know. Mars um, Hill, Mars Hill. I thought the same thing. Right. I was shocked. And, and somebody said, no, no, yeah, it is. No, Driscoll's one guy, Rob Bell, something else. Yeah, it, in fact, the irony was it was when I heard Driscoll attacking Rob Bell <laughs> that I went, yeah. Wait a minute, aren't they at the same church? You know, and then I, I found out what was going on. But or the same uh, network, yeah. and, and, and it is. I mean, you know, uh, and also just for 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 protection. I mean, um, you know that you know to keep not only um, other churches but just other organizations from misusing your trademark. Right, right. Yeah, because what happens is then you know somebody that's using your name, your logo, whatever, um, they start behaving in a certain way and people associate that with you. And all of a sudden your reputation is being affected by something that these people are completely unrelated to you are doing. Right. Um, there was a, a, a guy, uh, and I think you remember the situation, uh, our synod was getting ready to have his convention and, uh, this guy, Bought the domain lcmsconvention.org, uh, and uh, he had this website and he used yep. his logo on it and everything. And he got a cease and desist letter from the lawyers of the synod, and he was really upset. And I'm like, "What? Anybody looking at that? Your your website would think it was an official website, right? Right? And it's not. It was. It was just like a blog with." Kind of yeah, it was a his, his comments opinion. on it on what was going on, right? And uh, you know, and, and 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 you know, I showed a few, pointed out a few points where he was extremely biased, and he admitted, "Yeah, you're right. I, I should reword that." But the fact is, is that the synod, uh, you know, had every right to say, "You cannot use our logo." Mm -hmm. Yeah, now he you could know, use the the domain, and but you know, it's like. If if you're gonna do something like that, then you've got to really go out of your way to make your affiliation and your um, you know, to let people know exactly who you are. Right. And uh, so a lot of people hear that this is a Christian today, and no, it, it's you know a lot of people talk about you know a lot of these lawyers say you know uh, a, a lot of uh, you know this you know trademark is a simple low cost way to protect against identity theft by preventing others from misusing its good name and reputation. While protecting its investment and in branding and na name recognition, mm -hmm. I mean that's exactly what you're doing. Um, I, I, the, 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 the one, um, what was the one I said? Uh, I, I, there's one. Uh, the, the one I just love this last one. Um, a trademark implies the name of the church is more important than the name of Jesus. Jesus reached people without money or marketing was pretty effective. People aren't won over by marketing, but by the power of the gospel, it's always been free of charge. We are called to be creative in the way we communicate, and we certainly don't need to bow to marketing strategies. Yeah. Danielle Schroyer, Pastor Journey Church in Dallas. Gee, I would like to use her name and start saying, Journey Church says. Well, the irony is there's <laughs> Journey the Churches all over the place. That's a... The, she's probably saying that because she's using it and didn't get permission from, you know, and, and I'm not even sure if there's like a Journey Church network, but that's become like the hot name for churches. It seems like I see it all. There's one in our area. Um, what Journey? Who? Who's the big name that's got a church named Journey? Is it? Um, is it Nelson? Nelson Searcy? Don't know, I've never heard of it. New York, um, yeah, it's a yeah, it's a, it's a big name um, for churches. Well, even the the mission plant that was he, right here in North Ridgeville, the LCMS mission plant that um, really sadly uh, had to close not too long ago was that one was called Emmaus Journey, uh, but used that that name Journey in it. Um, but. Yeah, I know. I, I saw that. <laughs> uh, that's that's just somebody that is is trying to sound really pious and stuff. And it's like people that don't like to use the term marketing uh, for churches. But um, guess what? If you uh, do anything to, yeah, I mean, like painting your building is marketing. Having a sign out front is marketing. You know, right? I, well, taking out an ad in the paper is marketing. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, we're doing, you know, uh, any, yeah, you can. Having you know, a website, there's, there's, you know, I mean. Yeah, there's negative and positive to marketing. Right. But you're not trying to sell the gospel. Right. Well, speaking of lawsuits, it's time, and speaking of Wisconsin, and speaking of losers in Wisconsin, like <laughs> Texas today, uh, let's talk, let's go talk about our good friend, uh, Annie Laurie Gaylor and the Freedom from Religion Foundation. This okay, is so. this is interesting that you you pick this story. Or talking about, um, you know, the it's the annual courthouse nativity scene uh, thing. Um, a good friend of mine uh, is a pastor in the next town over. Um, at, at or I'm sorry, not a pastor. He's a DC, and um, and their church just um, he, he noticed that the their community did have a nativity scene. And, um, but he noticed that it hadn't been out. And, um, and so he contacted the, um, parks department or whatever and, and said, Hey, I noticed that the nativity scene's not out. Um, do you guys fall prey to the, you know, political stuff? And, and, uh, he says, no, actually it's just really in disrepair. And, um, and it's, uh, it actually hasn't been out for the past few years, uh, just because it's just, it's really shoddy. We really can't publicly display it. And so they got, um, like a couple dozen people from their church together and, and worked on it for like a week straight, 14 hours a day. Um, people working in shifts and stuff and repainted everything and, and patched things up and glued pieces together and stuff like that and got it all real nice and, and set it up in that. And so I thought that was interesting that, um, you know, having done this, which I thought was a really cool thing to do for your community, um, you know, then, and, and they haven't gotten a single complaint about it. And this is a, right. this is a good sized community. Well, I don't think you get too many complaints in, you know, Athens, Texas either. I mean, you know, it's just, uh, uh, you know, it's a little town out uh, 90 minutes outside Dallas and they have a town square and they have the county courthouse and, um, they always put a nativity scene out on the county courthouse, and so they did. And um, <clears throat> as it often happens, um, they they uh, got a letter from the Amer the Freedom from Religion Foundation out in Madison, uh, Ohio, Madison, Wisconsin, and um, saying that they needed to take that nativity scene down. And not only should they take the nativity nativity scene down, but their banner should go up. Uh, and the banner should read, It's this winter season of the winter solstice. Let reason prevail. There are no gods, no devils, no angels, no heaven, no hell. There's only a natural world. Religion is but myth and superstition that hardens hearts and enslaves mind. And, uh, he says he's not exactly. Um, <laughs> I like this commission, Texas commissioner. <laughs> His response was, "You come to my house looking for a fight, you're going to get one." <laughs> I like the 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 um the nativity scene will remain up until the um the season is over or hell phrase is over. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just for people, it's, it's a, a rural town. Um, Athens, Texas, as of the 2010 census, had 12,710 people. So you know, right. to me, that's not rural. Um, to me, that's uh, sort of suburban. But um, then again, I used to live in a town of 200 in rural Iowa. That was rural. <laughs> you know. Um, you know. I, I, you know, it's just... It does say that the Freedom from Religion Foundation got a letter from um, one of their members, one of their members that lives in the town, which may or may not be true. We'll uh, the, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay. Well, let's assume they did. Okay. I mean, because they're saying having this this nativity scene on the uh, courthouse is saying this uh, now is endorsing Christianity. Is it really? Or is it just an acknowledgement that this is a Christian holiday and we have a lot of Christians in this community? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, you know, up here, um, you know, there's a Christmas tree and there's a menorah. 
you know, which, of course, one of the things that was up here was that they were, the, the, governor, the, the governor had called it a holiday tree. And so somebody raised their hand and said, so is it a holiday conda opera? <laughs> okay, well, here's the thing. I, I just caught this this morning. We watched, uh, um, I did a, a one-shot uh, Bible study on using the um, Lutheran Armour Ministries. Uh, they did a video thing on St. Nicholas, which is really cool. If you go to uh, lhmmen.org, I think, um, and find a study on St. Nicholas, it's like a half-hour video. It's really cool, even if you just sit down and watch it. Um, but one of the things they pointed out at the beginning was that um, that the Supreme Court ruled that Christmas trees – and Santa Claus are secular symbols. So you can have a Christmas tree. Uh, they were point was they were talking about Santa Claus and the fact that St. Nicholas is not secular. But, um, but yeah, Christmas trees are okay. The Supreme Court has ruled that. But, I mean, nativity scene, you can't say that it's a secular symbol. right? At the same no. time, like, you're going to protest the fact that, um, that New York has a St. Patrick's Day parade? You know, I mean... It's it's about the culture of the people living there, and it's not it's not an endorsement of the beliefs of that um, of that community, um, or or saying that everyone in this community that you know if you want to feel welcome here, that you better be a Christian any more than a St. Patrick's Day parade means that um, that if you want to um, feel welcome here, you better be Irish. I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. Or Irish Catholic, <laughs> specifically. Right. Um, I mean, yeah, it's, it's. I don't know, I get tired of, of you know, An Annie Laurie Ga Gaynor, you know, she seems like you know, she has nothing else to do other than have file, file, you know, lawsuits and spend a bunch of money. You know, I mean, you don't believe it, you don't believe it, we're not asking you to. Right. You know, just just let these people acknowledge that this is a that this is a religious holiday. There is a long tradition in America and in history of, um, you know, um, oh yeah. I'll go back and, and 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 use the Medes and the Persians. I mean, they conquered all these groups. They had all these different kinds of religions. They would you know pay for temples of all different kinds of religions and say, please pray for the government in these religions. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean. You know, and they <laughs> can't hurt. <laughs> they were they were neutral to all of them, really. You know, uh, right. uh, you can have a this idea of being neutral and yet acknowledging that this is an important religious holiday for a lot of people, without necessarily necessarily endorsing it. Right, because atheism isn't. You know, we don't have a state religion. It's not Christianity, and it's not atheism. Right. Or, we, or we, even we, secularism. We don't have a, I, I don't know. I, I don't like saying people say we have a secular state. I don't think we have a secular state. We have a religiously neutral state. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. Secularism isn't the state religion either. Right, right. It's 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 a you know religiously neutral state. Uh, you know, and I don't know. I mean, I just don't. I just don't get it. I mean, what was it? Um, was it Sacramento? Sacramento. I was reading about this week, uh, and uh, they have Palisades Park out there, and uh, they had a lottery to put up displays and 25 of the 31 spots went to atheist organizations. They just flooded, you know, the thing to, you know, with, with, with requests and, you know, kind of stuffed the ballot box a little bit. And, you know, so theirs were drawn out because they had, you know, a hundred of them for one of everybody else's. And, um, you know, to do what? Is it there to say, all this is fake? I mean, yeah. all you're doing is irritating people. You're not gaining anything for your cause. I mean, this is the whole thing. What it comes right down to it is this is innocuous, right? A nativity scene. Now, for for the Christians, I don't think Christians should get all up in arms about it either, um, because it's it's certainly not the the uh, local government's responsibility to put up a um, a nativity scene. But at the same time. I don't think that anyone who's not a Christian should get all uptight about it either. I mean, right. it's just a, it's a lawn ornament. Right. You know, I, I mean, remember back uh, when in, in yeah, about, oh my gosh, so I, I lose count getting old, but I guess it was um, at least 15 years ago. 
93 and 94. And Springfield had this thing called Bright Nights at Forest Park. And it's this long light display that you go through. And um, they had this one part called um, Themes of the Season or something like that. Or uh, um, And they had a menorah. And they had Stars of David. And they had this other stuff. Um, and they didn't have a manger scene. They didn't have a, 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 a krish at all. And, you know, the, you know, and somebody had had the, this, you know, told them, uh, and they said, "Oh, we have one made, but we were told that was illegal." The menorah is okay. Yeah, you know, I guess it's the holiday candle opera is okay. Uh, you know, the made-up holiday of Kwanzaa is okay, but the, you know, this is wrong. I mean, they're they're like, you know, no, you're you're treating everything equally here. You know, there's, you know. Uh, and so they, they, you know, they apologized for their bad legal advice, and they very promptly set it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, now, on the other hand, if you want to really sort of get uptight about the whole um, Jesus is the reason for the season uh, kind of thing, um, actually, uh, the winter solstice is the reason for the season. Um, the Christians just decided to de-emphasize uh, the winter solstice pagan celebrations by um, putting the uh, by by putting oh well let's uh, let's celebrate Christmas uh, we'll, we'll celebrate Jesus birthday even though he was probably born in the summertime uh, or late spring um, we're, we're gonna celebrate his birthday the dead of winter uh, just to draw attention away from um, from the winter solstice celebrations. So we stole it from them. And, uh, and so when people c- complain that, you know, people are trying to, uh, steal Christ out of Christmas or something like that, it's like, well, we did it to them first. <laughs> sure. Oh, well, you know, such is life. Uh, well, speaking of suit lawsuits and things, uh, and other issues that we've dealt with in the past, but, uh, 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 <clears throat> Some pastors now are really um, daring the IRS to come after them. Actually, they really want to. Uh, they want to get sued by the IRS. So it um, starts off here with uh, uh, senior pastor First Chip in Dallas, who endorsed Rick Perry on his church's website. And the good people in Americans United for Church and State promptly asked the IRS to investigate them. Uh Ever since the 1954 Johnson Amendment was passed, churches may not participate and intervene in any political campaign, according to the IRS. And churches that don't comply could lose their tax exempt status. Uh, and uh, the Alliance Defense Fund, which um, uh, is a kind of nonprofit, what they're hoping, they want churches to do this, to sound off on po- political issues, to get sued by the IRS. So they have within a They'll, they'll then supply the lawyers to, to fight this in court. Um, the, the problem they're having, however, <laughs> is that a federal court, um, you know, and, uh, uh, in 1984, a federal judge said, well, the regional commissioner has to be the one who do this. Well, in 1996, the IRS reorganized and got rid of the regional commissioners. And so... Now, a federal court said, well, I don't know who you're having do this, but it's not the equivalent of a federal or regional commissioner, so you can't, you can't enforce the rule. So until you figure out who, who's this person and, you know, it needs to go high enough up the, 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 the IRS chain to actually be somebody with some authority behind them. So it's kind of in a holding pattern until they figure out who this, this person is. Right. Um, yeah, so, they're, yeah. you know, they're sort of like, Going, they're they're trying to pick a fight, but there's no one there to pick a fight with. Right. Well, the United, you know, the American United, they're they're going to complain. I'm, okay. I mean, this is something. I don't know. Sometimes maybe it's just me, but I have a belief that you give people enough rope, they can hang themselves. So mm-hmm. you know what, American United, you want to be smart. Let these guys endorse. Let him just go out there and talk about how great this person would be and why this person would be so great. 
And there are going to be people who look at this and go, I think you got to be one of the stupidest people I've ever seen in my life. Right. There is no way I would ever go to your church. Right. Right, exactly. Because, you know, what it comes down to is, okay, for one, um, Christians uh, don't go to churches where the pastor is um, endorsing a candidate from the pulpit because he's supposed to be talking about Jesus. Okay. Right. Not Rick Perry. Uh, or anybody else for that matter. Yeah. Um, and and, and oh, well, and they're supposed to have the Sunday. They, and they have the Sunday where it encourages pastors to preach on the moral qualifications of candidates. Well, you know what? <laughs> they're all sinners. <laughs> <laughs> they're all sinners. And it's interesting because like, we've been talking about church discipline in my congregation. We're we're, we're doing a kind of a, a review of the catechism and stuff. And uh, one of the things we, you know, and, and Paul says. In First Corinthians, why are you worried about those outside the church? God will deal with judge with those outside the church. You deal with the people inside the church. I mean, it's not the calling of the pastor to pass moral judgment on the candidates. Yeah, allow God's the people job. to use their own God's job, and allow the people to use their own sanctified common sense and who they're going to support. Um, granted, there may be some moral issues. And sometimes it gets a little frustrating, I think, for, um, I want to say Christians of all political stripes, uh, particularly pastors, to see people who are supporting somebody, and you're going, but, 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 but. So I remember when you were out in Ohio, Iowa, and you had a member walk out with a Hillary Clinton, Clinton button in on her. And I'm sure you're saying... What about her record on pro-life issues? What about her record in this area? What about her record in that area? But she's sitting back going, but there's other areas that, you know, I think she's the right person for this job, even though she's not where I'm at in every every place. Right. Yeah, and, and um, you know, even I've, I used to be a hardcore Republican, and, and I'm more of a moderate now um, because I realized that not all these, you know, Sometimes you need certain changes to happen before other changes can happen. Um, so, and yeah, frankly, right now my position is what we really need if in a president is somebody that can actually get Congress to accomplish something, <laughs> not somebody who's hard right or hard left. But it's just my personal opinion, and I'm not even a political science major, nor do I play one on a webcast. <laughs> but, but. Oh, man, don't get me. <laughs> you have to be pretty bad as a president to have a supermajority in both houses of Congress, and you still can't really pass anything. <laughs> you know, I mean, um, yeah, well, you have passed things that they came out probably being the wrong thing, but that's another issue altogether. <laughs> um, you know, but I'm, I'm, you know, <laughs> but I would, you know, I can't. The other day, we had our pastors' conference, and one of the pastors, he's our, our circuit conference, and he, one of the pastors walks in wearing this huge, I mean, huge, humongo Palin button. And, um. Didn't she drop on? I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> okay. I mean, and he's, it gets highly annoying. It really does. Okay. And, you know, I'm sitting there going, okay, you're in Massachusetts. There are a lot of people who are going to see you wear that button and go, what kind of hayseed are you? I would never come to your church. Mm -hmm. You know, it would just be, conversely, conversely, I went to into a chaplain's office on a college campus out here. Um, it is a church, it was a school that had a, religious background and he had a poster of Cica, uh, of Caesar Chavez in his office he had a post a uh, uh, thing going across saying nuclear freeze now um, which is, this was in the 90s and that was so passe already um, and uh, I can't remember what the other thing he had kinging up there was and I'm looking at this and I go man if I was a student here I would wonder, are you interested in helping me? Mm -hmm. Because where you are politically and where I am politically and where I was in college politically are two different places. 
Right. Yeah, I even kind of go back and forth with, you know, I have a, in my, in my office, uh, I have a, um, a cheese head and, um, and I have a, uh, an old University of Wisconsin helmet and actual, I mean, like a used one. It's got the dents from the, from the games and stuff like that. It's got the old W on it and stuff. Uh, cause my dad worked for the university and he had connections and, and got it for me. Um, but I, you know, being here in Iowa or in, <laughs> in Ohio, I haven't done that in a while. Um, you know, I was, I think, okay, is that going to turn people off? You know, as and, long as you don't have a University of Michigan um, sign and one that says "Go Blue," you're okay. <laughs> if you had that, you'd be in trouble. Well, you know, I always tell people that um, Ohio gets the colors right. Uh, you know, there's lots of red and white stuff around here. They just don't know how to spell, and they keep putting O's on things instead of W's. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, but yeah, I'm, like, I'm is that going to turn people off? Kansas City. Um, everybody in my church knows it, um, you know, and I support KU and I, uh, uh, and, you know, somewhat, I'm not that big in college, but, you know, they, you know, it's, we joke about it, right. you know, and we're able to joke about it, and, you know, and I'll, I sometimes talk kid about being an exile, you know, that y'all talk funny, you know that, and, uh, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll, you know, but it's a teasing thing. It's not, you know, anything that, you know. Right, right. Because politics and people look gets at me and go, nasty. "Yeah," and people look at me and go, "You're not from here, are you?" What gave you all that idea? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so you know, it's it's kind of fun. Well, uh, interesting thing to end this with um, <clears throat> was well, a uh, thing that came out this week. And that was the number of married people. And uh, as of, according to the Pew Research Center, uh, working on census data, um, just 51% of all adults, 18 and over, are married, um, which is down from 57% who are married in 2000. And down from, that was down from higher. Uh, plus, the median age of when people first marry is now at 26 for women and 29 for men, which is the highest it's ever been. Mm. Um, you know, uh, okay, I think, though, uh, um, there may, the first, but there's, but there's a lot that, you know, as I read this, you know, and you know, and then, of course, they had the earlier one I think we covered, you know, is, is marriage obsolete. Uh, of course, that survey was done of, of a lot of college students and things where it was a very different understand, you know, a very different grouping, I think, than the normal group out there. Um, mm-hmm. But oh, but also, and I don't sure know, know if this article mentions it or not, um, uh, 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 and that is that, uh, you know, Sixty percent of the of the people who are not married want to be married someday. Uh, matter of fact, uh, one woman even said, "I don't know anyone who doesn't want to get married someday." Uh, but I think there's things that are that are different. I think um, you know there is a longer lifespan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was one thing when you were you know not expected to live to be C sixty five to get married in your early twenties. Well, that made sense. I mean, because, you know, who knows how long you, you know, you, you know your lifespan was shorter. Now that, the, you know, you, you can be expected to live to 85, some people are saying, you know, I get married at 30 and still be married 50 years. Right. You yeah, know, and, uh-huh. and those lifespans continue to, to extend. I mean, I'm, the with some of the new medical technology that's just, that's like, already out there but not available to the public yet. I mean, you know, they're talking that, like, my kids could easily live to 100 and, and things like that. I mean, that remains to be seen. But And I won't see it, but, um, you know, I mean, I, I hope for their case they do. But, I mean, it does uh, it, you it might change see it. the you game. You don't know. Um, and the second thing that I think of that, that, that they did mention is causing it, and this happened in the 30s as well, 
not sure how we're going to do this, folks, but uh, we've got to have a little problem with it. Um, one part we talked about the problem with marriage is during the, the Depression, there was a, a lowering of marriage rate because of the economy. And now, okay, see, I'm 22 years old. I come out um, of school. I've got all this debt. You know, can I really get married? You know, so a lot of students wind up going back home till they, you know, get, get a job and start paying some of the debt down. Mm-hmm. And they, you know, they got too much debt to really talk about getting married. I, I, you know, I knew a young couple and yeah, they got married and, you know, they both had a lot of college debt and, you know, they're starting off with, well, they were like $80,000 in debt between the two of them. Mm-hmm. And I know others who talk about how much, you know, student loans they both owe. And it's scary to get married when you're that, you start that far back in the hole. Right. Uh, and especially yeah. if you took some of the awesome courses. There's a, a article up here in the Boston Globe about some of the awesome courses at some of the schools up here. Things like uh, the art of the burlesque. You know, nice. And, uh, and surfer, surfing culture in America. I'm like, you and my kid, I'm paying big bucks, and you're taking, you know, surfing culture in America. I ain't paying any more money. <laughs> Gee, I, I thought, I thought that would, I took the most uh, sort of out there class that I took in college, um, <laughs> besides all of the classes for my theater major, um, <laughs> was uh, I took a, a kendo uh, Japanese sword fighting. Um, yeah. it, I, I needed a history credit <laughs> and accounted for history because we, we also studied Japanese feudalism as part of the class. So I could take kendo but not fencing because fencing was yeah. purely physical. But, okay. but anyway, um, yeah, I, I, and that wasn't, um, you know, but that's that's different. Um, you know, it says that in the 19, in 1960s, um, seventy percent of all adults were married. The median age for brides was barely twenty, and grooms a couple of years or older. Which you know, yeah. But one of the differences then is that you most, a lot of people only you only had a high school degree. Very few people went to college. You know, it's it's one of the weird things is today is that almost everybody's expected to go to college. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that right there, you delay getting married for four years. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, I I do not recommend you know if you're in college, wait until you graduate to get married. It it's just you know it's just not a good idea to get married before that. Um, so whereas if you're not going to college, you know, graduate from high school, get a job, and you know, not get married. Get a married. lot of people, I mean, and and and. I mean, it's getting it to the point where a bachelor's degree is not enough. You almost have to, you know, some people, you know, say, I, I really need a master's. But then they, right. you know, and well, don't get me started that I think higher education overall is a ripoff. But because uh, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, don't get me started on seminary education. <laughs> There's a whole episode right there. <laughs> That's right. Well, you know. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, um. Yeah, so I think there's, and, and of course, I think the third thing is, um, the acceptance of, um, uh, of cohabitation. Mm-hmm. You know, that so many couples, many couples, uh, will just move in with someone without marrying them. Yeah, it's, it's become like expected. Mm-hmm. You, you, um, you go out, right? You have sex. You lather, rinse, repeat a few times. Uh, if things work. If if you're not hating each other, you move in together. You do that for a few years, and then you decide whether you want to get married or not. And you probably have a kid by that point too. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, I, you know, I have. I'm probably the majority of kid people. I deal with marriage, you know, are living together, uh, or cohabiting. Um, I've known, you know, I've had a few friends of mine, 
you know, they've told me things like, yeah, you know, my, my friends all are shocked that we're, you know, that we're not moving together, that we're, you know, they're, you know, they're just like, huh? You know, because it's, yeah, that is almost considered part of the courtship stage now. Well, if you're going to cohabit, um, that again is going to push off getting married. Right, right. It reminds me of a, a story um, when, uh, back when we were in Iowa, uh, some of the foster kids that we had, uh, one of them was looking at our wedding album and, and looked, saw the miniature bride in our wedding and asked if that was our oldest daughter. I went, no, we weren't married yet. And then it clicked, oh, her parents still aren't married and she's you know, <laughs> old enough to be asking questions about that. So, like, oh, yeah, for her, do you get married whenever, if you do, or, you know, it wasn't uh, having kids and, and getting married had nothing to do with each other, you know. So. I mean, like we we had to explain to her, which was really tricky, because like, okay, how do we explain to her what we believe about marriage, and um, you know, and and having kids and and all that kind of stuff, without it coming across as an attack on her parents, right? You know, it was it was it was a difficult thing to discuss. Uh, same way as in when I'm teaching confirmation class, and I've got kids in the class whose parents are not married. Now, I've had that situation. And and here we're coming up on the Sixth Commandment. And I'm talking about, you know, God's understanding of marriage and sexuality and all that kind of stuff. And uh and here I'm I'm telling these kids what's right and what's not and and I know that that kid is sitting there thinking about their parents. And and like, oh man, this is you know, I, I, I can't change what God has to say. I can't compromise the truth. At the same time, um, I don't want this kid to feel bad about themselves, you know? Right. So it's a, it's a tough thing to deal with, but, uh, yeah, no, I mean, marriage is just, it's not, I, you know, I've, I've said this before, but, um, all this discussion about, uh, about gay marriage, right? God's definition of man of marriage is one man, one woman married for life. All right. We threw out the married for life part a long time ago. All right. So the next step is the one man, one woman thing. And the last thing, and which we're, you know, in the process of throwing that out. All right. So the next thing, um, is married. And we're in the process of throwing it out. It's sort of ironic that you've got people fighting f to be able to be married when everybody else is saying, "Why bother?" <laughs> um, well, the next thing we have to throw, we have to not can be thrown out is just one. Right, right, right. And, and mean, that's that's coming up too. Right, it's already I mean, happening. Already, we um, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> um, I'm I'm convinced. If we do not deal with the issue of homosexual marriage in our country, uh, if that does become legal across the country, I am fully convinced that within 10 years, polygamous marriage will be legal. Right. Because it will be the same argumentation. Yep. So, I may be wrong, but I am... Man, we still ended up talking about gay marriage. <laughs> You did. You sorry. brought it up. I didn't go anywhere near it. I'm sorry. Hey. Mia culpa. Mia maxima culpa. <laughs> that's, that's just Dale. He's just got that issue on his brain. That's his right wing, you know, <laughs> hardcore conservatism coming through. Well, folks, uh, regardless of who you support uh, uh, in terms of politics or in terms of football teams, though, if you support Kansas City, so much the better. Um, we... Um, do want to see actually in the playoffs. Oh, hmm. well, Packers already won their division. <laughs> they were just, this game didn't yes. mean a whole lot except for home field advantage, possibly. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> but you lost. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what it comes down to. Um, it just 
just as much as uh, uh, I remember one time when when uh, uh, um, you know it, it showed it shows other teams there are some glaring weaknesses there and how to exploit them because believe me this ta- that tape of this game will be watched by other teams oh, yeah. heading into playoffs. But be all that as it may, um, we do wish you all a very blessed Christmas holiday. Uh, we're not going to be here for either Christmas. I don't know if we're going to try New Year's Day even. No, uh, no. don't know what day you're getting back from uh, the, the promised land up there in Wisconsin. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not going to be ready to record right. at that point. So it will be uh, uh, January 8th would be our earliest next uh, get together. Mm-hmm. So God watch over and bless you, though, this, this, this holiday season. Yep. Uh, Good night, everybody. God bless. This, 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 this,